Hello everyone, my name is Ash Barth and this is going to be a bit of a different one. This is, this is going to be a discussion video in the middle of all of these collectible videos. I'm going to be a bit collect about most of it. So first of all, my my choppers are doing so well, the pain is going away. Yeah, oral surgery is not to be underestimated, especially with the recovery. But also first... I, while we're doing these discussion videos, I don't think it's the best ideal to, you know, stare at the boat on the beach and then hear the waves. Sure, it's a bit of a peaceful idea, but let's do a bit of a scenery. Hmm, how about something... Oh yeah, concept art. Because we like to concept art, and it's pretty nice. Yeah, this is better. Okay, so... There's going to be two of these discussion videos, just a bit of a heads up. Uh, this first one is going to be entitled... Uh, why do, uh, why is this game getting the love-hate relationship? There are pretty much two separate... Uh, three separate ways of having to say what... Well, why people say it. Back early inside of 2020, which was last year, this game was getting the most... Uh, most previewed, and especially how, well, of course, has there been controversies here and there, uh, but which, that's just mainly on them, because Naughty Dog tries their hardest to get their games out. I mean, you gotta uh, give credit for Naughty Dog, because they're the people who created the Jack and Daxter series, the Nathan Drake or the Uncharted series, even had some pretty good uh, old titles, which most of the old titles I've never played, but who am I to say? So, let's start with one of the very first hers of heaven to say, why do the critics love this game, as calling this a masterpiece even by story, but the fans truly despise this? Well, pretty much this was not the first game that had the love-hate relationship, huh. as there are plenty of video games to do so. But so far, let's go ahead and discuss the very first part, her, like, what are the of the things in which gamers do and decide right, to say, done, I'm not playing this game anymore. Joel's death. Well, I would just have to say this. Yeah, when I first played this game, and I played this during midnight release, I did pre-order this on my console, the Digital Deluxe Edition. It did break my heart to know that Joel did die. He was killed off. But and here's the thing. As it comes to the second part, as having to do the pre uh, second playthrough, that was back when my old console had been destroyed, and it used to be su supposedly a blind playthrough, until I got in this current console, which I did the second playthrough. Now that I've done it all over again and see Joel's death again, eh, I mean, sure, he's dead, and it happens. It was going to happen eventually. Don't get me wrong, hear me out. I'm... Let me be fair with this. Everyone dies. That's the thing. I am a bit of a, of a nihilist with all of these kinds of situations. Because, yeah, people will eventually die. Hey, and having to say that they tried to write Joel off, in which people have decided to quit the game because of that. Well, when you look at him, he is still strong as an ox, but he is getting old, and knowing uh, that... If I recall, he was in his 50s right now, probably in his late 50s, currently at this day and age. Hey, without him, the revenge story would not uh, come up for it for Ellie. Well, it more often makes sense of why Joel was needed. If you played the first Last of Us, at the very end of it, the doctor that was about to extract the immune system while killing off Ellie at the very end, that doctor was Abby's father. Which, of course, if you played as Abby later on as the game progresses, that's how the revenge story hey, starts. I mean, gotta crack a few skulls to get a revenge story, am I right, guys? It was one of those inevitable moments. Huh, can't say that I complain. And especially when, and, you know, Abby would be able to uh, spare Ellie because she was younger. I mean, that kind of makes sense. That's that why hey, Abby would bring in two innocent kids who left the Seraphite encampment 
just to, uh, redeem herself. Yeah, that's kind of a backfire because, yeah, that set off the revenge story. Hence of how Naughty Dog wanted to bring in an interesting story of a revenge story. Revenge plot point to counteract the revenge plot points. That does make sense, that's the reason why. Even to say that a lot of people hated the idea because... Eh, revenge stories, revenge cliches are getting a bit old. But that's... that's not to me though. I'm a big fan of revenge stories. It's one of my favorite cliches ever. Even not to mention, it is part of how it is. And even honestly, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with having the revenge against revenge. It's a bit of a pile up. And then to be honest, with how the ending goes with the only Last of Us 2 with Ellie needing to move on because, well, she has to embrace it. Everybody dies. It's the rough universe of The Last of Us. It's much as I say it's the cycle of violence, but the cycle of violence talk will talk huck, in a different discussion video. Now we get on to the second discussion, and in which pissed people off, Ellie's, j Ellie's love interest. Or at least her, uh, her, um, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Love of same-sex relationships. I mean, haven't we already learned about that back in The Last of Us, us during the first game? Hell, if we played Left Behind, we all knew that Ellie was in love with Riley before Riley had to be killed off. It was just sad and all that. I mean, didn't we already know about that? For people that, that just go and be like that, they're homophobic assholes, just like Seth himself. Whenever it came to Seth, I just wanted to punch him in the face because, well, he's homophobic. And we all don't like that. Especially, hey, as I'd be able to build my community around, we don't accept homophobic or transphobic assholes. They are instantly kicked out. They are kicked out for a good reason. Well, even enough to say, it's just about human rights. Let Ellie love other people. Well, I have... I have indeed love with her whenever she came into having love towards Riley because that's just how, how it was. Especially when she had a love when she's the love interest with Dinah. Eh, some even can say that Jesse was also part of the love triangle. Uh yeah, it does feel like that it is a bit of a love triangle, at least to my honest opinion. Now would I be able to say that it's has one of those controversies? It's not at all. I mean again. We already knew about her gender, her just being a female, and her love interest was indeed Riley during Left, well, Left Behind, and it did sadden us as to know that she did lose a love interest. And besides, yes, we all loved Ellie as she is back then, but especially when she was around 15 years old and trying her hardest, and especially as today, hey, we still love her today. I still enjoy playing as her, her, well, to be honest. Us, until she had to go through the same, same interest of not letting go. That's the one thing then that I would have been. If it was me, I would have lived as the hermit, and just knowing, yeah, people die. It's the universe of The Last of Us, survival of the fittest, you know? And well, let's go ahead and go into the third controversy of why people hate this game, Abby. Huh, how do I explain it? Let me see. To be fairly honest, Abby is just there because, again, she was just there as the revenge plot uh, goes because she was wanted to avenge her father. Her father was part of the Fireflies. Even for such, Abby and Owen and the rest of her friends were part of the Fireflies. And having to join the wolves because they're friends and they wanted to find a new settlement just to uh, keep their people safe. I mean... If you've seen the Colosseum during Abby's site, it was just interesting. It's pretty interesting to know a lot about how well, they build up the establishment and at least build up a colony. It's very interesting, especially when it comes to who going against the Seraphites, in which case, it shouldn't be in the case of how, you know, the wolf is not the one that had broke the bond. I keep thinking it's just Isaac, which I have to say this, 
it would have been interesting to kill off Isaac and have I have Abby to go against Isaac because Isaac heck, was the one that broke the truce and that's why the Seraphites and the wolf go against each other. And yeah, to a lot of weird people to uh, say this and me saying it, why do people hate women with muscles? I've seen plenty of women on Twitter uh, that had a very nice six pack. How do you not like the idea of having your uh, having to get crushed in their thick thighs and their muscle hold six pack? They're awesome. To me, having to say, we respect women, well, except the manipulative kind, because, well, I did grow up and deal with a lot of women uh, that did manipulate me, and I had a bit of trust issues, but in all instead, uh, we all respect women, uh, you know, human rights. And I say, it's why she wanted to say, you know what, I don't want to see your face again. She was trying to be a bit more remorseful, I mean, say that to someone who killed off Joe. But do I be able to uh, the resent playing as Abby? Not exactly. I don't resent having to play as Abby. Well, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would be able to say, Hey, God, this game is terrible because we have to play as Abby the Killer. Oh my God. I understand why. Okay, and don't get me wrong, totally understandable. But then again, would you be able to see the revenge plot again? Can't really... They build up the revenge plot without cracking a few skulls. That's like can't make an omelet without uh, cracking a few eggs. That's just quite the same. But I digress. Which also makes sense of why uh, humanity goes against each other. Because again, that's the part of the cycle of violence. Again, the cycle of violence talk would be just in a diff separate discussion video. And one... One last thing to say, remember what I said earlier of this video that involved the love-hate relationship? Last of Us 2 was not the very first game that had the uh, love-hate relationship, for the fan base, that is. If you all recall oh, a game called Star Fox Adventures, that game had a lot of hate and love of relationship with the fan base. As of course, Hearst, the main character was meant to be a, a guy named Saber. That was most often back when Star Fox Adventures was mainly called Dinosaur Planet. And of course, Hers Crystal, who was, who was supposed to be the main protagonist, along with Saber, who is the side protagonist. And as of today, with Star Fox Adventures, Hers after the GameCube debuted, and Miyamoto was just noticing, the character was, was looking similar to Fox. He wanted to start redoing the project. And <laughs> with a lot of troubles that that game had, and so many delays that it had, no wonder it got so many of the love-hate relationship. That totally makes sense to me. Another game that I would think of is Destiny. Yeah, Destiny, the first Destiny, had a lot of problems, but of course, as myself being an RPG lover, I do enjoy the grindy bits. I'm used to it. I play RPGs mainly for the grindy parts, and definitely he enjoys such. And people just be able to leave and go back. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. People have their ways. One more thing before we end this video off is criticism. Between all that I've discussed involving and the criticism, especially why people left. Uh, uh, here's me saying this. Are you really a gamer if you're not playing the game com from the beginning to the end? It's even such a pop well, plenty of people have to say they would not want to play while well, watch the remainder of an anime or so because of one specific thing. I just skipped the episode. Well, if that does hurt. I mean, it sounds like I'm a bit of a dick, but I'm just saying that uh, because, you know, I'm a fan of it. Just ignore the bad parts and such and just move on. I mean, it sounds like me being a bit of a critic. And... Even to say this, being a critic is fine, but having to give death threats and such, it's uh, pretty pathetic if you ask me. And believe me, during the whole of 2020 with all of such going on, uh, Neo Drunkman, and especially my favorite voice actors, top six, hands down, Laura Bailey gets the death threats. What? 
You're gonna go and dig death threats because of a game that you did not like? Well, just don't play the game and get your money back. It's really pathetic for people to have to do so. Again, criticism is fine. I am a, criti a critic myself, but I do my stuff constructively. I do constructive criticism loads of times. At least I don't do death threats, because that's not how life works. Life doesn't work when it comes to bringing up death threats, especially to the developers. People are downright blocked and have viewed as pathetic because of such for good reasons, especially again. Death threats were never the idea. And I can't believe that's going to be the end of this discussion video called of why this game gets a lot of hate and love. So now, we're done with Ellie's part of the collectibles post right now. So, in the next few videos, we're going to go into more of these collectible videos, and this time we're playing as Abby. Hate okay, to deal with the park and all Seattle's day ones to three. And I'm going to have another discussion video of why there's such a thing as the cycle of violence plus before we get to the remaining collectibles. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And by the way, <clears throat> before you go ahead and bring in some of those dislikes, you are helping my videos with those views. So neener neener. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye-bye.